What's up you guys, it's your boy Sega here with another YouTube video to help you guys stream Call of Duty Warzone, especially for you single PC users. Today we're going to be going over the best in-game settings for your viewers viewing experience as well as for your gaming experience. I'm going to keep it short and to the point, so please follow along and pay attention just so you don't miss out any of the details. And two, if you do have any questions or if you want me to explain things further, go ahead and leave a comment down below as I do try to reply to every comment. Alright, with that out of the way guys, let's jump right into it. All right, guys, let's jump into some general settings here now. We're going to start with field of view. You want to keep this at 100 or 100 to 120. Uh, I wouldn't go any lower than that. Brightness, this is a very dark game, and at moments it can be very bright. So you want to keep it around 50 to 55. You know, mess around with it, see what you like the best. Uh, for my HUD, I like to keep it around 75%. That just, you know, makes a little more room so you can see the environment in the background personal preference really uh skip introduction movie i definitely enable this unless you like to your ears to bleed every time you uh start up the game which i hope you don't but hey if you do you know disable it uh tool tips personal preference subtitles personal preference colorblind if you're colorblind please use it you, i mean you shouldn't have to limit yourself just because you think your viewers might not like you know the color scheme if you're not having a good time gaming then your viewers are going to be able to tell and it just you know you want to have a good time gaming so your viewers can have a good time viewing um so definitely use it if you're colorblind um for the mini map i like mine square i just prefer you know if someone's in this little corner right here you see it on a square but not the circle so personal preference square i like it to rotate as well so mini map rotation i would enable that as well um the letters it's really up to you if you want to say west 270 some people don't really you know correlate with numbers well versus just saying hey it's west i'm kind of that way so hey west he's he's west you know um text chat personal preference personal preference personal preference um this stuff i like to have my server latency on and my fps counter just to see what frames i'm getting and you know see how my internet's doing just because i have some pretty bad internet but hey it's you know it's just how i monitor it while i play just so i know what's going on if i and i can have an excuse i was lagging you know <laughs> but um Next, we're going to go on to the in-game graphics. This is going to be your bread and butter of how your stream is going to perform, as well as how many frames you're going to get while gaming Call of Duty Warzone, which we all know is a CPU intensive game. So for a lot of people, it's not going to be a crazy amount like other games like CSGO, where you can get 300 frames easy, just putting everything low. Here, you're not going to get that same kind of value. Um, it's just very CPU intensive, and it's just a game that demands a lot from your uh, system so we're gonna start with display mode i go full screen i found that when i go full screen um the range of my frames usually stays in between 120 to 180 i know it's weird but it's just how you're running in the environment and everything i do know the notice though when i go full screen borderless i get a stable 144 frames i don't know exactly why that is but if you're gonna cap your frames like i'm gonna recommend a little later on in the video um you can stay at full screen just to have that range of going from 120 to 180 or you can stick with the full screen borderless and just stick at i think it sticks at your screen resolution which mine happens to be 144 so i think that's why i get that stable 144 across the board and full screen borderless so i would recommend using these two i haven't really messed around with extended window uh, but these are the two i would go with if you were going to try that and i'll explain the frame cap a little later as well my screen refresh rate is 144 i mean it's what your monitor is my render resolution i have a 1920 by 1080 monitor so i want to keep that 1920 by 1080 if you have a 1440p monitor you know you want to switch it to that but you just want to switch what your monitor is aspect ratio you want to be 16 by 9 uh v-sync definitely disable that and then here we go custom frame rate all right guys so when you cap your frames you limit the resources the game is going to take away from your pc that helps obs to use those same resources to stream that's why a lot of people will have problems especially single pc users when they're trying to stream this game is because everything's fighting for the resources so i would definitely recommend leaving a cap like i said i have a 144 hertz monitor i cap at 180 it just gives me a little extra breathing room so i can get a little more frames than 144 but it also leaves that cap on there so my uh, pc doesn't try to overextend and exhaust itself and then there's nothing left over for you know obs to perform well um so i would cap i would cap it around 40 fps more than your monitor so if you have a 60 hertz monitor i would go like 100 120 maybe if you really want to push it um, 144 i would go to 180 maybe 200 if you want to push it and then 240 hertz i mean if you have that beastly of a pc 
um, you might be able to leave it unlocked but if not if you want to make sure just go like 280 maybe 300 you know what I mean um, but yeah I definitely recommend capping your frames it's just what's gonna save your stream especially for your single PC users um, Nvidia highlight disabled display gamma 2.2 texture resolution I have this at normal I found that you know the percentage of how many frames you drop isn't too crazy here so I usually play at normal um, the filter texture filter I usually mess around with normal or high just depending on how I feel um, again it's a very small you know FPS uh, affects FPS by small percentage as well so I usually go normal or high just depending on you know how I'm feeling on the day but that's the two I would recommend going too low it just makes the game look really crappy um, and like I said it's very small percentage for both of these so I will leave these normal maybe even push them both high you can mess with particle quality it doesn't really affect your resources too hard so I would go at high here as well um, bullet impacts personal preference tessellation disable this um, shadow map resolution this is something else that it's going to affect your uh, frames very severely if you put this at high you're going to lose around you know 15 to almost 20 frames depending on your system so i would definitely leave this normal you still lose about five frames but it makes your game look good it doesn't make it look nasty and choppy like uh, if you were to put it on low so i definitely recommend leaving this at normal you can mess around and go a little higher if you want but just know you are going to lose frames um, cast spot shadows and cast sun shadows these really depend on your ram if you have 16 uh, gigabytes of ram you should be good to enable both of these but if you're just messing around with eight gigabytes of ram i would definitely disable these um or if you even have 32 definitely enable i have 32 gigabytes of ram so i enable this uh, but this is more of a ram thing than and than anything else so enable these if you have a good amount of ram or even fast ram disable them if you don't have that much ram um particle lighting i like to keep this low uh ray tracing disable that ambient occlusion disable that the screen space reflection disable that it's not like you're looking at water to see if someone's in that reflection to look up and shoot at them so i would disable it anti-aliasing is another thing that affects your frames by a lot so i keep this off for personal preference but if you really want to smooth out those edges in your environment i would turn this up all the way to t2x but just know you're going to lose like about 15 frames again doing this um, but it will make your environment look a lot smoother the edges look smoother a little more detailed as well um, so i personally don't really care and i haven't really heard or seen any of my viewers complain about this so i personally would recommend turning it off just because i'm trying to get the most frames that i can um, but if not like i said go to t2x uh, depth of field disable this filmic strength this correlates to your anti-aliasing if you have this disabled you want to stick at zero but if you have this at t2x you want to put this all the way to one um, it just they correlate well together and it won't make you lose more frames from this one. It's just you want to put this at one. It's the whole reason why you're you're making your game look finer. Um, and then too, for world motion blur, I disable this. Weapon motion blur, I also disable this. And film grain, regardless of anti-aliasing, uh, you just want to keep this zero right here. Um, but yeah, those are all the settings and those should definitely give you the most frames for your performance as well as leave resources left open for your OBS. The big one that does that is gonna be capping the frames. You always wanna cap frames when you're trying to save resources, especially for single PC users, guys. Okay, all right. All right, guys, that's the bread and butter right there. Those are going to be the best in-game settings for you. This is what's going to look the best and what's going to give you the most frames. Um, if you're still having problems, you might want to turn on game mode in Windows. This has been found to like help a lot of people when they're streaming and gaming uh, Call of Duty Warzone. I don't know exactly why that is. I heard it's because it limits resources that the game is using just so it's easier to share with OBS. But I've tried it and it actually does work. Uh, because I've had some of the best settings on OBS or the lowest and then some of the best settings or even the lowest in the game and it still would show up as choppy. It would be just the game and not my webcam so I knew it wasn't really, you know, OBS or my internet. It was more just the resources being shared from the game to OBS. So go ahead and turn on game mode in Windows if you're still having that problem. If uh, it doesn't fix that, go ahead and message me. I'm gonna leave my Discord in, down in the description. Hit me up there and we can try to solve it together because um, I'm really here to try to help you guys out. Um, and once again, this is gonna be what's best for the single PC users as well as just anyone trying to stream Call of Duty Warzone. Um, and with all of that out, you know what guys? Peace, have a good day, drink your water, have a blessed holiday. What the? <laughs> all right, take three.